in this guide, I'm going to take you through the first part of the second objective in the scenario. So looking at the scenario, the objective says that the database should display the details of the personal tutor logged in. So what I've already created is the login form, and I've already imported the relevant data into the tables. So what you're going to want to do to start off with is open the login form in design view and double check what you called the ID column when they log in. Now in this guide I'm going to do it using temporary variables which are set in the macros. However if you use the name then that's absolutely fine and I will tell you when you can use that instead of the temporary variables. So you can use either method. The temporary variables are slightly more difficult but they're more efficient and as I say using the name there is much easier than the temporary variables. So you're going to want to double check and remember the name that you set that text field in the login form. And you can then close that. And what you're going to want to do is to create a new query based on the tutor table. Because the objective says that we want to display the details of the tutor that's logged in. So I'm going to use the tutor ID, their last name and the first name. I'm not going to put the password in because you might argue that might, you know, might not be good for security but then it all depends what they ask you in the actual exam itself and it's likely as well they give you more data, maybe addresses and that sort of thing. So just drag those down and in the criteria for the tutor ID what you're going to want to do is open up the builder and this is where you link to the text field in the login form using the forms there, form login and then you link there. However I'm going to just do, you, uh, do it using temporary variables so all it is is temp files, exclamation mark, username is what I called it. But instead of typing that, you can just link the login and then say the user ID there. Either way works perfectly fine. So click OK there, and as you can see, you've got that displayed down there. Then what I'm going to do is save this as query current tutor, if I can type, current tutor details. Just click OK. Now, when we run it, it's not going to return anything because I haven't logged in yet. So all I'm going to do is just close that for now and open up the login form. So HWO and then input the password. And then just click login and it takes me into the tutor page because I enter the details of a tutor. So now when I open up the query for the current tutor details, as you can see we've got the last name and the first name and the tutor ID, which is what we've been asked for in the scenario. So closing that, I have to close that one as well. I'm going to use a subform. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either have a subform based on the query, or you can just base the actual tutor form on the query. But you can only base one form on one query, and I just find it easier to use the uh, to use uh, subforms. So what I'm going to do is just go into create, and then make sure you've selected the current tutor details, and then just click on form. As you can see, Access automatically generates this form here for you, but you might want to play around with it, so I'm just going to go into Design View. I'm just going to get rid of the header and footer, just click Yes to get rid of those. And then I'm just going to play around with slightly resizing it. I'll just drag these to make them a bit smaller, and then just resize that up so it aligns with the grid. Once that's done, you're going to want to save it, and then I will just save that as Form Current Choose Details. And then when you go to view that, as you can see, you've got the ID, the last name, and the first name of the tutor. Now to get this into the main tutor form, because you can see the form is currently empty, what you're going to want to do is open that in Design View, and literally just click the current tutor details form, and just drag it across. And as you can see, it then brings up this the current tutor details form. Just get rid of that title there, and all I'm going to do is just drag it up there in line with the grid and then just resize it like that and then just save that and hit save and then when you view it there you go as you can see you've got the tutor ID, the last name and the first name in the tutor form itself. So that's the first step which is just displaying the details of the personal tutor that's logged in and in the next tutorial I'm going to go through generating and displaying the total number of students in the particular tutor group.